This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Well guys, before we jump into the new video of today, uh, there is some exciting news that I want to share with you guys, and that is that uh, Feedspot has placed MH Tutorials in the top 100 best animation websites on the planet. Now, you can imagine how excited I am about that. And this is all because of you guys, because if you didn't watch my videos, I wouldn't make them. I wouldn't push myself to grow the channel and come up with new content, you know, as much as I do. So a big, big thank you to you guys. I'll put a link down below so you can check that out. Uh, I'm not number one, but that's fine. I would even be happy if I were number 7,000, but the top 100, that is amazing, okay? Now, uh, today's tutorial, uh, just to get back into things, like I said, I haven't touched a keyboard in a few weeks, so uh, you can't imagine how fast you, know, you forget things. So we're gonna take it easy, and this one, we're gonna do a wooden bucket. And we're only gonna use Maya, so we're gonna do the modeling process, and that's it for today, and uh, more to come, okay? So enjoy this video, and have some fun. Here we go. All right, let's get started. We are going to start with a polygon cube and we're gonna hit R to stretch that out like so. We're gonna push that in a little bit and we're gonna pull it up for height, okay? Now this is gonna be one of our sideboards for our bucket. And because we are going to go with a high poly model that we can later on uh, bring down to a low poly, for example, uh, we do not have to be too concerned about poly count. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to um, Mesh Tools, Insert Edge Loop, Option Box. We'll do multiple and let's do um, five and we'll add five right here. Okay, we're going to hit Q on our keyboard so that will allow us to bend this object in, um, in a shape like this. And I'm just wondering whether we need any in the other direction, but I do not think so, okay? Cool, so now that we have this one, we need to hit Q on our keyboard. We're gonna select these two outer edges because once we start to rotate these around, we want these edges to be somewhat broken. So with these two selected, we're gonna go to Edit Mesh and Bevel, and then we'll tweak the fraction a bit so it isn't too big. Let's do, let's see, 0 0.2 is fine and we can even increase the segments if we want. Just wondering whether that will be, yeah, we could do that. Considering it's a high poly model, we're okay with that, okay? So I'm gonna set the segments to three to just get this little rounded corner there, and we're good. Hit Q on our keyboard, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna decide on the number of boards we need, and let's decide whether this thing is too wide or not, okay? So we're gonna right click in object mode. Let's hit R and push that in just slightly like so. And then we're gonna switch to our top view. We're gonna move in. Our pivot point is in the middle, as you can see. So we're gonna hit Control D to duplicate. We're gonna hit W to move that over and keep this quite tight. And the reason for that is you don't want to have the bucket open that the water can run out, okay? With that one done, we're gonna hit Shift D to repeat. So that will give us three. And we're gonna keep on going until we have 20, okay? So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Um, that's always a question of eyeballing this, whether it's too much. Um, I guess it is a bit much, so let's see. Yeah, let's go with three, four, five. Okay, we'll go with 16, okay? So I'll get rid of that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drag, select these guys, okay? We're gonna go to Mesh and Combine, like so. And then we're gonna go into Deform and we're gonna go to Nonlinear and Bend. And our bend deformer is now in this direction. That is not the direction where we want to bend our object. So we're gonna hit E to rotate that. Hold down J on your keyboard so it will snap in sections of 15 degrees. 
until it is level and hit four on your keyboard so you can see the wireframe and see if it actually is, is level or not. Then we're gonna hit control A to bring up our attribute editor. We're gonna go to our bend tab. And as you can see, we need to rotate one more because it's going up and down right now. So we're just gonna set that back to zero. We are going to hold down J once again, and we're gonna rotate in this direction. Now to make sure that we're good, we are going to look at this guy here. This should be at 90. And now if you go back to bend one and we tweak this, it should curve in the right direction. And as you can see, it is, okay? I'll hit five for shaded mode here. Hang on. And then we'll make that a full 180 degree curvature which will give us the basic shape for our bucket. Uh, not quite there yet because we need to tweak the top so it's spread out a little bit, but this looks good so far. So we're gonna select it, we're gonna go to edit, we're gonna go to delete by type and history, which will delete, delete our bend handle. And now we can go to modify center pivot, so it's in the middle of our object, we can switch views. Let's go to this view here. Right click our vertex. Drag select these top vertices. Hit R and start to scale that out to flare that out just a little bit. Okay. All right. So now that we have that, we can start to look at the base in the bucket. Now, a couple of ways you can do that. If you are not too concerned about seeing the actual bottom uh, for whatever you're gonna use this for, then you're probably okay. Uh, if not, you would have to create individual rectangular slots in there, okay? I'm just gonna go with a polygon cylinder. There we go. And what we'll do is we'll take this guy and we'll go to our top view. We'll hold down uh, W to move it. And then we'll hold down X so we can snap it to the center of our grid right there. So now when we take this bottom section here and we hit R to scale it out, you can see that we can get closer there, okay? You can see that it's snapping here. Uh, that's not what I want. So I'm gonna double click on this and see what's going on. And sometimes when you switch the orientation, that is gone, not in this case. So just hang on one sec while I uh, fix that. Okay, I'm just gonna reset the tool. Usually that's enough. There you go, okay, cool. All right, so um, let's see. Um, I want this to be nice and round. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at my poly cylinder. It has 20 subdivisions, that's not quite enough. So I'm gonna go with 40. And what I'll do is I'll go into this view, hit four for wireframe mode. We're gonna hit W to move that down. This seems still to be snapping. That's um, a different one. So we'll reset that as well. That's odd. Okay, well, we'll go with that, that's fine. All right. I'm gonna right click at the vertex. I'm gonna drag select these top vertices. We're gonna bring that down until we have a nice thickness. Probably something like this. Right click at object mode, hit R to scale that out. Have a look from this view. Let's go to modify and center pivot. W to bring that up. That's about a good height. And then we're going to hit R and we're going to start to move that. And it's kind of tricky because you want to make sure that you're not cutting into that edge there. All right. And then what you want to do if you want to be really picky about it is right click the reverse hex, not that one. Object mode, hang on. Okay, just that guy. 
uh, we're gonna right click the vertex we're gonna drag select these top vertices and these are the only ones that we're gonna flare out to kind of mimic that slope that you got there okay now the problem with this thing is that you have a lot of triangles right here shouldn't be a problem but we'll see we're gonna select it we're gonna go to mesh we're gonna go to clean up and uh, let's see we're not gonna have any faces with more than four sides but I'm gonna check anyway yeah we're good so this is the basic setup for the bucket then we're gonna start to create some metal rings for that we'll take a polygon pipe hit W pull that up R to scale that out let's go with 40 subdivisions we're gonna downsize the thickness to let's say 0 0.1 0 0.02 even yeah that's much better we're gonna switch views hit W to move that down hit R to make that nice and thin and then R to scale it in Maybe get a little bit more height, like so. And then from this view, we're gonna have a look and see what we got here. Because we need to, again, mimic that angle, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scale that in to about there. And then we're gonna right click at a vertex. Come on, object mode just that one right click vertex drag select the top vertices and again scale that out until we roughly have the same slope there okay we're gonna have a look and see if it is in the right position and looks okay and so forth and there we go that's all right okay so we want two more of these so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to this view we're gonna hit Control d to duplicate w we're gonna push that one down to about there and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click and go to vertex come on sorry about that guys right click vertex we're not gonna scale this we're gonna uh, bring in the vertices. Well, we're going to scale it, but we're going to scale it in a different way. Okay, so let's hit R to scale because I don't want to change the height too much. All right, so that one's good. Then we are going to right click the object mode once again, hit Control D once again, W to pull up. Let's have a look at our height here. Yeah, that's about right. We're gonna right click at our vertex again, drag select them, hit R. And there you go. So we now have that. Then we're gonna deal with our handles up here on top, okay? So, right click object mode, Come on, yeah, there we go. Now what we'll do just for the heck of it is we'll take a polygon plane, hit R, scale that out, for the simple reason that it will give me a little bit better visual information. So I'm gonna hit W to move that down. Actually, let's take our entire bucket, bring that up. And then take this guy. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll take a basic light source here. Go to create and lights, and let's do a um, directional light. Why not? Let's pull that up. Hit seven on our keyboard to activate our light, so you can actually see it. I'm going to hit R to scale this up, so I can see where it's pointing. It's not going to increase the strength of my light, just so I can see the handle better. And I'm going to hit E, and I'm going to kind of rotate that. 
Okay. Alrighty, so here's our bucket. Now, for the handles, what we're going to do is we're going to take a uh, polygon cube, hit W, we're going to move that up. Looks like all my tools are snapping. Uh, it's not this guy though, no. So I'm going to double click on my move tool. I'm going to reset that one as well. There you go, that's better. We are going to hit R to pull that out, like so. And then I'm going to hit W, move that over to that edge. Check it from the top view. I have to zoom in. Four for wireframe mode. Okay, so that's going to be somewhere around here. We're going to R to bring that in a little bit. And now we need to have a look from this view. So let's bring that into about there. That looks all right. Then what we're going to do is we're going to select our bucket and our three rings. Okay, we're going to go to mesh and uh, combine. We're going to hit Control H to hide it. Hang on, we didn't take our floor and we did take that. So select all of this, deselect the floor. Make sure, come on. One, two, okay, that's fine. Mesh, combine, we'll fix that in a bit, okay? We're gonna hit Control H to get rid of that. So we have better access to this guy. We're gonna select it, right click at a face, select these faces and the one at the bottom. So we kind of get that shape right there okay now what i want to do here is i want to create um kind of an eye on top here that will allow me to put the, uh, the handle through it so for that we're going to go to insert edge loop option box multiple and we will do six add them right there okay and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna see which ones we want to use. We'll do right click face, hit Q in your keyboard, that one and that one, hit delete. Then we're gonna right click and go to edge, double click on that one, shift, double click on that one, and go to edit mesh and bridge option. I want a smooth path and curve. Okay, and the divisions will do 12 for now. Let's hit bridge and see what we get. Okay, so not quite there yet. Um, number of divisions, we can tweak that. Taper, not really. So we're gonna set that to zero. Uh, no, we're not gonna set that to zero. Sorry, just go back. Let's see, we want to get that height a little bit. Just trying to see which one I need to do for that. Okay guys, what I'm gonna do here to get that height is just go back a few steps and I'm gonna Make sure I got both of these selected. I'm gonna hit Control E to extrude, hit W to pull up. So we got a good starting point here, like so. And then I'm gonna to go to a bridge option. I want a smooth path and a curve. Um, we're gonna leave twist at zero. We're gonna leave taper at zero. Division 12 for now is fine. Let's hit bridge, okay? Not quite there yet, so I'm gonna bring down the number of divisions to maybe even less. Let's do four. Oh, that's odd. Five, okay. And then we're gonna tweak it manually. You don't always get exactly what you want from the get-go, so sometimes you have to manipulate that. 
have to zoom in. So what we're going to do here is we're going to right click, we're going to go to vertex and we're going to drag, select these and these. Hit W and we're going to start to pull that up and then we'll take these and pull that up again. Okay. Hopefully that worked okay. Just gonna hit six on my keyboard to turn off my light here. All right, so that's good. Uh, not quite there yet. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna go in, we're gonna right click at our vertex, and we're gonna drag, select these guys, pull that down a little bit, skip a row, pull that down, and pull that down, okay? Now, I want to smooth this guy out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click at the object mode. First, I'm gonna hit Control E to extrude it to give it some thickness. We'll do 0 0.1, which is good, yep. And then let's hit three to preview smooth so we can see where we need to add our edge loops, okay? Hit one to go back. We're gonna go to insert edge loop option box manual and I'm going to add one here we're going to add one up here let's do one here one here and again we don't have any uh, real polygon restrictions as this is a high poly model okay like so hit Q on a keyboard right click object mode Three to preview smooth. Looks pretty cool. Not quite there yet. We're gonna add some here. So uh, let's see. We'll do one in here and one in here. Q on a keyboard, right click object mode, three to preview smooth. All right, much better, okay. So we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna actually smooth it instead of preview smooth. So we're gonna hit one to go back and we're gonna to go to mesh and smooth. And then what we're gonna do is set subdivision to two, why not? Not too worried about the poly count, like I said. Select it, we're gonna do mesh and clean up just to make sure that we don't have any um, ungons going on and we're good. And then we're gonna go back to mesh and uh, let's see, sorry, display, show all. And there is our bucket. Okay, so we've got one of these guys. Let's make sure we've got a nice snug fit here. And let's see what our best angle of view is. Let's try this to start with. We're going to hit E, we're going to tilt it slightly. Let's see. Edit and delete by type history. Modify center pivot. Okay, and again, that snapping is going on here. So reset tool. Okay, that looks like a good angle here. Okay, let's bring that down slightly. Like so, and that looks about right. Just wondering whether we need to scale it in a bit. That's a bit too much, so we're gonna kind of bring that back a little. That seems to be the optimum. Okay, so we have that. Now what we're gonna do is copy one over, obviously. A couple of ways we can do that. But what I'll do in this case is I'm gonna hit the insert key. 
I'm going to hit W, uh, sorry, no, I'm going to hit the insert key. I'm going to move that over. And what I'll do is I'll hold down X to snap it to the center. So now I can rotate it around when I duplicate it. So I'm going to hit Control D, duplicate. Sorry, hit the insert key first to turn that off. Control D to duplicate, E to rotate, and hold down J as you rotate that around, like so. Just want to make sure that I don't have two duplicates here. Hit W, move that up. Yeah, that's what I thought. i do that again. No, oh, that's good. All right. So we've got our two handles here. That's good. Now, for the next part, we need to create the handle. Um, for our bucket. They seem to be cutting into the mesh a little bit. So a couple of things I can do here. First of all, I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to right click at an edge. And I want these edges to be beveled. I do have to select them one by one. So I'll just do that. Hit four. For wireframe mode, and I want them from both sides, so and I'll quickly pause the video while I finish that. Okay, guys, select it all the way around. We're going to hit five for shaded mode. We're going to go to uh, edit mesh and bevel. And we can't do too much there, but it's just enough to get rid of that. Let's see. Maybe a bit more. Let's do three. Yeah, three is all right. And actually, we can decide to increase the segments a little if we want. Let's do three on that. Okay, and now we need to tweak these guys. Right click object mode. Hit Q on my keyboard first. Come on. There we go, okay. So if we look at it this way, we're not gonna see the bucket. You can see that little bit going on there. So we're going to shift select that one. We're going to hit W and we're going to slightly raise that. All right. So that should all be good. Uh, I'm going to go to mesh and separate so I can get rid of that ground plane for now. We'll drag select this whole thing and go to mesh and combine. There we go. And then the next step is to create that handle. All right. So for the handle, what we're going to do is we're going to start at our top view right here. And this is, let's see if we can see this okay. Yeah, it should be okay. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to create. We're going to go to curve tool and we're going to select CV curve tool, All right? Now, we're going to start here and we're going to click here, here, go through, okay, that looks pretty symmetrical, which is good, and let's try to follow that, and this is mainly eyeballing it. Let's see, we'll go to about here. No. We'll have to do a few in between here. Let's see if that will work. Yep, we even need to do more than that. Let's do two. Come around here, okay? Now the tricky part here is to try to follow the same flow as much as possible. 
So we need to end up, let's see, two from that position, somewhere around there. Okay, so first we're gonna go here. And it doesn't have to be perfect in the sense that everything is exactly the same spot because after all, it is a steel handle. So let's see, we got that and we got two and one. All right, and then we got two and two, two and one. And then we're gonna to start to go in to about there. And we can still tweak them as you can see, I need to go in a bit more. And then we'll go out. Okay, so let's see what we got. I'm gonna hit Q on my keyboard. I'm gonna right click, go to Control Vertex. So I can select them, hit W, and kind of move them if I, oops. If I have to, yeah, not too bad. Okay, so it's down there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna right click, we're gonna go to object mode, we're gonna bring that up. Sorry wrong handle here let's bring that up let's make sure that it's sitting where it should sit so that is not touching anything that's good that one seems to be okay as well and we want the handle to lie on top of the bucket so we don't want it to be down here we want it to lie on top that's why we chose to do it this way Okay, so I'm okay with that. I'm gonna tweak this a little bit so that's a bit rounder. So I'm gonna go in here and right click and go to control vertex. Let's take these like so. And yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we're ready to go on that. What we're gonna do next is we are going to go in and take a um, Polygon cylinder, pull that up. We're gonna go with 20 subdivisions and zero caps, all right? Then we're gonna right click, go to face, select all the faces except the one on the top here. We're gonna right click in object mode, modify and center pivot. And then we're gonna move this over to our starting point. We're gonna hit E to rotate, hold down J to snap it down until we are at 90 degrees. We're gonna hit W and we're gonna move that down and towards the start of our curve. Have to zoom in. And we need to position this so it's kind of lined up, if you know what I mean. So let's have a look from our top. Have to zoom in. We're gonna W, we're gonna move that over here. Again, I have to zoom in. Let's rotate that a little bit and try to get an angle close to 90 degrees. Okay, so what I mean by that is that our face is pointing towards our curve and then we need to try to get it as close to the center as possible, which looks okay. And we need to decrease the diameter, okay? So we're gonna hit R, we're gonna scale this way, way down because it's gonna have to fit, obviously. And I'm okay with this. Maybe we need to tweak it a little bit. So we'll just push it down just a little bit more, like so. So we have all that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in, we're gonna right click at a face mode, not object mode. Make sure you have the face selected. Shift select the curve. And then we're gonna go to Control E to extrude. We're gonna 
uh, increase the thickness and let's see we'll set the divisions to 150 to start with tweak the thickness okay we have an issue here not quite sure what that is could be related to divisions looks like the initial section here is not getting any subdivision not sure why so just give me one sec I'm gonna hit control Z to go back and it's totally possible that I am mistaken so let's do this object mode instead of face mode control E and there you go yeah, I am confused by the version of Maya that I'm using. Um, in one version it was faces, and in this one it is object mode. Okay, so sorry about that. So I'm going to set the visions to 150. I'm going to increase the thickness. Why is that not? Okay guys, I gave this some thought and you know what? I think the problem is that this guy right here, okay, is positioned at the end of my curve and not at the beginning. Okay, I started over there. So I'm gonna hit W to move it. It's not in the right mode right now. So I'm gonna double click on it and I'm gonna change it from object mode to world mode. So it's easier for me to move that over. I have to zoom in. And I'm specifically leaving this in the video so it will kind of show you that you will run into issues and you will have to kind of figure out what the problem is and how to fix it, okay? So we're gonna hit E to rotate that a little bit. While I'm saying this, I'm not even 100% sure that this is the fix, but I'm fairly confident. Let's bring that in a little bit. Okay. Again, we're going to line that up. Hit F to zoom in to get close to a 90 degree angle compared to our line there. Something like so. And let's cross our fingers and hopefully I am not talking nonsense. Okay. It's like this. Shifts like that. Not that. Hit Control E to extrude. Increase subdivision levels to let's say 150, and there we go. It's always nice when you can fix the problem. Okay, cool. So yeah, we're at 150. That looks alright. We're gonna take this guy, right-click object mode. Go to mesh and separate. So I can raise this up a little bit. Modify center pivot. As you can see, it's cutting through just a little. Okay, let's have a look at this guy. Seems to be okay. And what we can do with this handle here is if we like, we can smooth it out. Don't really have to, looks okay, I guess. All right, so this is our bucket. What we're gonna do is we are simply going to drag select it, go to mesh combine, go to modify and center pivot, and we'll do a light on it as before. Let's make sure that the floor is sitting okay. This will hit W and bring it down like so. Hit 7 on our keyboard. Okay. One more small detail that we can do. Uh, actually, it's not a small detail. It's an important one. We'll um, take a polygon sphere. We'll pull that up. 
And what we'll do is we'll decrease the subdivision level into, let's see, eight by eight would probably be all right. Yeah, that's fine. And then we're gonna right click and go to face. We're gonna delete half of it. So let's do that from this view. Right click face, drag select half, delete it. Right click object mode on this guy. And what we're gonna do is we are going to move that out. Hit E to rotate it, hold down J to snap it to 90 degrees. Hit W, bring that down. And F to zoom in. Four for wireframe mode. R to scale down. We're gonna position that on these rings here, but we're gonna need to make sure that they are positioned correctly, otherwise it's not gonna look okay. Hit W to move that in. And this is a, at an angle. So we're gonna hit E to rotate that just slightly. Let's try it from this view. Have to zoom in. Hit W and bring that in. And rotate that back just a bit. Okay, so now that we have that one there, we kind of need to decide, okay, how many of these do we want and where do we want to position them and so forth, okay? So this guy is right there. We're gonna go to our top view, have to zoom in. It's right there. We are going to hit the insert key. We're gonna move the pivot point to the center. And as we are doing that, we're gonna hold down X to snap it to the center which is good. We're gonna hit the insert key again. We're gonna make sure that it's selected. We're gonna control D to duplicate, E to rotate, and hold down J as we move it over. And I'm gonna do two steps, so that's 30 degrees. And then we're gonna hit Shift D and copy that around. And it looks like they are not all positioned perfectly. So let's have a look and fix that. Okay, so that one looks okay. That one needs to come in. All right, modify center pivot. And from an orientation point of view, you can see that we need to adjust that. So we're gonna double click here. Come on. Oh, there it is. It's not opening my menu. Here we go. I want that to be in object mode. So I can move it. And I'm gonna not I'm not gonna do all of them where you guys have to sit through that whole process. Uh, so just to make sure that they're all okay, what I'll do is I'll pause the video, position them correctly, and get back to you in a sec, okay? Okay guys, there we go. So I uh, adjusted those, uh, I don't know what they're called, nils, I think. So uh, that's uh, pretty much our final bucket. Uh, it's uh, nothing fancy, but it will work and um, you know, the next step would be to create a low poly bucket and um, bake the normals and so forth and uh, texture it and then you're ready to go in a game engine, okay? So uh, that's pretty much it. If you got any questions, let me know. And that said, thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.